Hey folks, how you doing? Uh, this is kind of like a part two to the last video I put up. The last one was talking about all the records I found when I w went to Amoeba Hollywood. And during my Hollywood trip, after seeing all kinds of sights around uh, Hollywood and LA and Malibu, I went to a few other vinyl stores. I didn't get a lot of stuff from those stores because Amoeba took such a big bite out of me. But I did manage to visit three other vinyl stores in, in, in LA. And they had some great stuff. They had some great stores down there. LA, without a doubt, is one of my favorite cities to vinyl dig in. Because the vinyl stores there are really, really awesome. And the people that work there really knowledgeable and friendly and know their stuff. So, so uh, I went to two stores that you know I found when I went to LA last year and one new one. So I'm going to show you the finds from those three stores. Okay, the first one is the return store. Um, I went to the store last year, loved it, and decided to come back again. It was Freak Beat Records, which is located in Sherman Oaks on Ventura Boulevard. Great store, <laughs> great selection. Uh, the, the guys that work there are real laid back and real knowledgeable, so they, uh, you got a question for them, uh, they are more than uh, able to answer anything you have uh, under the world of vinyl, if they can, <laughs> but mostly they can. It's just a cool store, it's a cool atmosphere, and I, every time I go there I find some, some cool stuff. So here's uh, the bag, this is me returning to Freak Beat, it was such a great store to visit last year. Had to go again this year, so these are the finds that I found from the store, and of course there's their sticker right here, really, really nice. So. This is what I found from them uh, on this outing. 10-inch uh, record from Rush uh, for the single The Body Electric. This is a 10-inch record. On the B side we have uh, The Analog Kid and Distant Early Warning on the B side. And it is on this awesome looking red vinyl record. So you can see. And there's the custom label there. Just an absolutely beautiful looking L, uh, not album, but record, <laughs> 10 inch record. Very rare, very rare. I mean, I don't know how many copies were printed of this, but it's a rare find. Sounds great, looks great. And um, yeah, I just about fainted when I saw it and immediately grabbed it. I knew it was coming home with me. Um, I'm going to see Rush in concert this year in July for their uh, R40 tour. And I learned online that this will be the last major tour for the band because of the drummer, Neil Peart, having some health problems with his shoulders and his arms over years and years of touring. He's kind of a hard hitter, Neil Peart, and I guess over the years, touring and playing that way has taken his toll on him. And he's having some health problems. So from what I've heard, this is gonna be the last major tour for Rush. So I'm glad I got a ticket to see it. I'm glad I got this 10 inch record, as limited as it is on red vinyl. This was a huge find, especially for a big Rush geek like me. Very, very big find. The last time I went to um, Freak Beat last year, I had, they uh, had in stock this awesome double live record from Gary Newman. And um, a very tough uh, album for me to find here in my area, so I was able to find it there. And I actually found the live EP, like a companion piece to that double live album. And it's Gary Newman, just the live LP. Uh, really happy to find this. Uh, finding the double live album last year in their store was amazing. So finding this, this uh, rare EP was even twice as amazing. <laughs> And it is pressed on this really limited blue vinyl with the custom label there. Really, really cool find. Um, some great songs on here. Uh, the songs are on side one, our friends Electric and Berserker. Side two, Cars and We Are Glass. This was a, a great find. Um, I have a small 45 that go, that's basically has the same uh, set list or song list. Also printed on uh, price on blue vinyl, so it's nice to have the 12-inch uh, EP to go with it, as well as the double live album, all on vinyl. So 
really cool find there. This wasn't very expensive at all. I think it was only like seven dollars, and um, something I never see out there. So really cool to find something uh, very very rare from Gary Newman. And the last thing I found at Freak Beat Records was a uh, LP from one of my favorite bands. <laughs> That, that would be Porcupine Tree. The album is the Incident import copy. This was a little pricey, but always worth it. I've seen a lot of people on the VC show this album. I've had it on CD since it was released, but nice to now finally have it on vinyl. Um, I guess I could have ordered it from the online store for, for, from Porcupine Tree, but always cool to find these things in a store whoops so there we go there's the gatefold and um, the artwork on the inner sleeves are really nice you can see here pretty cool pretty cool pretty cool and the uh, LPs themselves all have custom labels and it's just some really nice artwork. There's always great artwork and packaging that goes into the uh, Porcupine Tree LPs and Stephen Wilson as well. Uh, they're done with such care, <laughs> and uh, you could tell that you know that uh, Porcupine Tree and Stephen Wilson they're very serious about the artwork, just as they are the music. This is probably my favorite image on the inner sleeves. Is this one? Uh, this is just an image that just stays with me. Uh, the back one is, you know, not as cool, but still good. But this image really stays with me. This is a great album. This is the tour I finally got to see Porcupine Tree live uh, during. So during this tour and while they were promoting this record is when I finally got to see it. And it was a, such a, an amazing show. I had a great time. Like They've been one of my favorite bands since the mid-2000s. And to see them on this tour was, uh, was a real treat and a great, great evening. So I was real happy to find this. Uh, in Freak Beat, they had a lot of earlier um, Porcupine Tree records on their expensive shelf, their wall. I, I think there was the original copy of Signify and Up the Downstair, and another one of their earlier albums, whose name, the name of it escapes right now. But they were real expensive. Since they were original presses, they went for something like a range from $150 to $200 her album and that was just a little too rich for my blood at that point <laughs> um, but you know, at least if I knew if I wanted them I know where to find them <laughs> but that that's a lot of money but uh, this was affordable somewhat it was still pricey but it wasn't 100 to 150 dollars <laughs> man I was really happy I got it I spun this already and it just sounds absolutely amazing here in the room so that was my visit to Freak Beat Records and that's what I end up taking home back to North, Northern California. The second store I visited was a place called Rockaway Records located in Los Angeles um, just outside of Hollywood and that was a cool record store. Uh, great selection. The records are a, a bit pricey in this store but it's it, this is a store for serious collectors now. <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, you could find kind of like dollar bin type records there as well. There are some scattered, but next to them are all the collectors part. Collectors and rare records are, are scattered in there as well. They also have a counter in the back of their store for very very ultra rare collectibles, 45s, 12 inch records, 10 inch records, which they keep on, which they keep in a room at the back of the store and you know you have to make a request to see these and learn more about them and uh, those are very expensive records it was in this store i saw a copy of porcupine trees dead wing another original copy original pressing and i believe they wanted 250 dollars for that i couldn't afford that but i managed to pull one album so here it is right here rockaway records i forgot to show the bag if for those who are curious Great store, really great store. And the one record I pulled out of here is a bootleg record. And I've been looking for a bootleg from this band for a while. And this looked like a good copy. It's from The Pretenders. And it is called uh, Cynical Sensation. Live recording. 
bootleg. Uh, the date on the uh, the performance was in May of 1980 in New York. So, and it's pretty much the whole show on uh, two records, so two record set. This is an audience recording album, but it's a good audience recording. I mean, it, it, though it's an, it's not a soundboard recording, it's an audience recording. It does sound really good, and they captured a really, really good performance from the Pretenders. Really sounded great. Um, the name of the label here is uh, TBS Records. Never heard of that label before. But I'll just show you what one of the records looks like. Here's the label. There we go. And um, that's the you know same label on on both records, both sides. But like I said, a really good audience recording uh, captured the band uh, during a really good. Really a good time of, of their careers. Uh, I think they were promoting their second album. And it's a great performance. A great performance. I remember uh, somewhere during the show, uh, it was commented that the night of their performance was was James Brown's birthday. And they, made, they acknowledged it on the record so you could hear him talking about it in between songs. Really cool. Like I said, great performance, really good bootleg, energy in the album is really good, and it's a good live performance. Um, I wish it had been a soundboard recording, uh, but uh, it's a good audience recording as well. So that's my find for Rock Rockaway Records. If I ever return to LA, I'm returning to this store because that place had some really cool stuff in it. The last record store I visit was a place called The Record Parlor. That yeah, was in Hollywood, a couple blocks shy of Hollywood Boulevard. Uh, another place I visited last time I was in LA. Um, more or less just there for used albums and 80s records and 80s 12 inch singles is really what all, what they have to offer there and some and some jazz and blues records as well, records from the 60s and 50s. It's a really cool laid back little store that I really love to go to. I don't really drop a lot of money there. But it's a cool store, and this is of course the, the bag from their store, showing the name of the, the, the store, the record parlor. And uh, just a few things out of this place, uh, like this one here from uh, Prince and the Revolution, Let's Go Crazy, 12 inch single. Um, though Let's Go Crazy is a good song, wasn't really what I was after, I was after the B-side on this one, which was a lot, uh, the song Erotic City, a song uh, duet with uh, Prince and Sheila E. Uh, that came out, I would say, probably 84, 85. Growing up, listened to a lot of R&B and a lot of R&B radio. That was a huge jam back in the day, Erotic City. So, real nice to have a vinyl copy of it. Let's Go Crazy is not bad either, but I really wanted Erotic City. and. It is printed on these custom labels here. There we go. So there we go. Side one, side two. Really nice. And yeah, it was cool to hear Erotic City again after all these years. <laughs> I remember every time they played on the radio, I'd crank it to death. I used to love that song. Still do, still do. It's dated, of course, but still a fun listen just to reminisce. Remembering when, when it was still fun to listen to the radio for the R&B jams <laughs> when they would play them. So that was, that was a cool find for me. Uh, the next one also a uh, R&B 12-inch uh, single from the band Shellamar for the song Dead Giveaway. Uh, Shellamar, of course, the song uh, Jody Watley originally came from before she went solo. And it is on the uh, Solar uh, label, which stands for Sounds of Los Angeles Records. <laughs> and there we go. Shellamar, Dead Giveaway. On the B side, we have the song um, I Don't Want to Be the Last to Know. So, really cool song, Dead Giveaway. I don't have any um, Shellamar records in my collection, but they were, they were a favorite band from back in the day. I always loved the band, especially when uh, Jody Watley went solo. That was 
She that whole album, her first solo album, to me is a classic. I love that album. Um, so whenever I can find 12-inch singles from Shellamar, I, I guess I'll start picking them up. This is the first one I ever found, and uh, really cool find. And the actual album I took out of this place, <laughs> the record parlor, uh, from Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, uh, Dan the Torpedoes, found a really good looking used copy of it. There's the back of it. Uh, it was a really in great shape. I mean, this thing almost looks new, uh, but it was in the used section. And uh, really happy to score this. As we listen to Tom Petty in the background here. Really, really good song, Refugee. Here Comes My Girl, Don't Do Me Like That. Some classic songs on this album. It's on the Backstreet label. There we go. And there we go, side two. Great album. Um, I've been listening to a lot of Tom Petty lately. <laughs> uh, I got a few of his albums in my collection. Don't have any of his CDs though. And there's a reason for that. The reason why I've been on such a Tom Petty kick lately with my music listening is just recently I joined a Tom Petty tribute band as the drummer <laughs> and um, and I had to audition for it didn't know any of the members uh, just thought it'd be a fun thing to do over the summer and maybe it might lead to more gigs and and uh, good times more basically I always liked the music of Tom Petty some I really didn't collect a lot of but I did like the music and uh, never really heard a Tom Petty song I didn't like or hate <laughs> So this, so to join a Petty tribute band, I thought would be a lot of fun, and it has been. I've only had a few rehearsals with the band, but it's already coming together, and um, so now I'm going to start collecting some more Tom Petty vinyl when I when I find it in good shape and good price. And um, yes, yeah, so I'll start doing some Tom Petty shows. The first one is actually scheduled at the end of the month at a nightclub in Modesto, and. That'll be uh, my first gig with the band. <laughs> and of course, we're doing some county fairs around the, around the region uh, during the summertime. Hopefully get into the casino circuit and the corporate gigs. That's the whole goal of the band is to score on those types of gigs. But for now, just having fun being the new guy in the band. Well, that's going to be it. That's, that's my Beyond Hollywood finds. Uh, Beyond Amoeba finds, I should say. <laughs> um, I love going to LA. I love visiting LA. I don't know about living there, but I do like to visit it and hang out there. Um, had a great time, just like I did last year. Uh, just a great getaway, especially for a vinyl lover with all the vinyl stores there, plus all the things you can do in LA. Uh, just, just days and days and days of fun. <laughs> the hours just go, just pass by like you wouldn't believe. And, I was there for a couple of days and it seemed like I was only there for five minutes and I had to leave. It was, that was how fun of a trip it was. Well, anyway, that's going to do it, folks. Hope you enjoyed this and please leave me some comments where I could uh, get a conversation going with you guys. Always great to hear from all of you. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. See you at the next one.